Okay guys, we have an electric furnace here. Complaint that it was setting off the fire alarm. So we're gonna open her up and see if we see any obvious problems. One thing you guys can see is that there's a rust line on the coil, Mortex coil, where the pan filled up and surely overflowed all the way down into the base and causes all sorts of problems. We have it open. Doesn't look like anything's really burned up that I can see. I'm gonna take a little bit closer look and we'll check and see. Guys, what I've decided to do None of the breakers are marked in the panel for this thing, and there's no breakers of the appropriate size for this <laughs> particular machine because we have, you know, a 60 and a 30 because we have a 15 kW furnace, and there's there's no 60s or 30s in the panel unless there's a sub panel I'm yet to find, which is possible. So I have these shut off without me trying to dig around inside of here and get my meter to aim out these sequencers. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn the machine back on with fan only. Because one of the things I've seen happen on these things is you have the fan that runs and then the fan fails and then the heat strips keep running and you'll have an issue with smoking up the house or causing the fire alarm to go off. So I'm going to approach it that way. I'll put my meter on it to see if any of the elements come on. So I'll be looking for 20 amps on the 30 or 20 amps on the first circuit and the second circuit will be 40 amps for the 10kW. amp clamps one on the incoming power to the first breaker one on the incoming power to the second breaker I'm gonna set the machine to fan only I'm gonna check the I'm gonna check the fan amperage see if it starts to climb see if it has a lock rotor see if it won't start we'll see let it run for a minute with fan only see how she does. Guys, we're looking at the rating plate. You see it's an E1 EH-015 to 015 is the KW. We have, hard to see, but there is an X right here indicating that we have a two-speed motor, one-fifth amp, one-quarter horsepower. Now, as you see, we're running at 1.6 and 1.7 amps. So I'm thinking that this motor is going to conk out here in a second, but uh, let's let her run and see how she does. You can hear a little bit of a whining noise in there. Something you'll hear on a fan motor that might be getting near its doom. There's our fan motor right there. Probably the original. We'll keep letting it go. But more than likely that's going to be our cause here. We don't have any sequencers locked because we've had the amperage register when we started it up. One reason to start it up on fan on, just in case you have a sequencer locked, you'll make sure the fan starts right away. Well, there we are. Could be a bad fan motor. We're going to give it a little bit of time. One thing I wanted to make sure that I did, whenever I was running the fan motor, I did block off most of the door with the panel just to check the amperage in a more realistic environment because we take the door all the way off, the amperage is going to go up. And the amperage did drop, but it was still at the rated load amp, which is definitely not where it's supposed to be. Guys, we're looking at the motor nameplate right now. I took it out. The unit continued to run. It did have a little bit of a hum to it, but no indication that it was going to slow down or lock up. And as we see, 1.6 amps. The nameplate said 1.5. So we're actually below this amount. I'm going to check the capacitor here, but I think we might have a different issue. I actually might be a sad, sad, sad individual. That's disgusting. I guess Fiable might not make it west after all. We have our blower assembly taken out. The capacitor in place was registering about 6.5, so I went ahead and replaced it and moved the capacitor up to the front so you could access it a little bit easier. It was back behind here. And this is the orientation when it's sitting, so now at least we can sort of get to it if we want to test it in the future. The blower motor does have a lot of play going back and forth, so it is more than likely on its near the end of its life should be replaced. 
But when I talked to my brother services unit a few years ago, and he said the same issue back then, had to change the blower capacitor. The blower looked like it was about to die. Keeps on going. We'll tell him it's probably a good idea to go ahead and replace this blower. But we have the capacitor now. We're going to go remove our rodent friend from the heat strips. That ought to be pleasant. Guys, we have the furnace back up and running. Like I said, took the blower assembly out, moved the capacitor out to the front, and changed the capacitor. Cleaned things up a little bit with a little DeWalt battery powered vacuum. We are running at 1.5 amps, whereas before with the door open, we were running at 1.6, so the capacitor does make a difference. I think, for reference, I think Gray Furnace Man did make a video here recently about running PSC motors with capacitors with a deficient capacitance and it sort of plays out in real life especially on these machines here I see it a lot where you have a capacitor it's like 7.5 and I'll be running at like 4 or 5 you'll start the blower but run at a slower RPM with a higher amp draw so definitely good to check the capacitors because it will cause a limit to trip on the electric heaters we're going to go ahead and turn the heat on now Let's see how she does as you guys can see from the meters we have 20 amps on our amp probe meter 5kW on there. Other leg we have 10kW on. We have 42.3 amps. That includes the blower amperage as well. So we have all 15kW on now. Blower running strong. We're going to let it run for a few minutes. Make sure the house doesn't blow up and then we'll get a temperature rise on the furnace. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a two-step process here on the I-manifold. We have our voltage and amperage of the heating elements that I've input manually. Then we'll go down to capture capture our active data and that's going to be our supply and return temperatures and it's going to give us an airflow calculation that's a little bit high because it just started as the temperature spread gets higher that number will drop guys I like to give the system a little while to run as you see right now we have a 1092 airflow you can capture data periodically but I'm gonna let it run for about three or four more minutes so that's probably about where we're gonna end up 1092 on a three ton machine is a little bit short but I rarely see it when there's too much airflow, which is usually not enough. And that's not as bad as most of the trailers that I see. So, not too awful bad. Could be a little bit better. We'll let it run for three or four minutes to get our final, uh, our final measurement. As you see, guys, we have about 1100 CFM airflow, which is a little bit shy, but uh, not too awful in the grand scheme of things. So I'm going to shut the thermostat off and make sure the heating elements drop off like, like they're supposed to and the blower is the last thing to drop off with the final element.